Okay, uh, so welcome everyone. Uh, so I'd like to welcome you uh, in today's session. Uh, I'm the program director, as Marianne mentioned. I'm Umut Konosh. I work at UFA for eight years. Uh, now, also on behalf of our uh, Dean, Mark Solomon, uh, we first thank you, I'd like to thank you for your interest to our program already well in advance because uh, there's still quite some time uh, until you apply, but uh, we really appreciate uh, you show such a great interest already. And today I'd like to give you some brief information uh, about the program, but uh, as the name explains, it's a meet and ask session. So first we meet and I give you some brief information, then we have uh, time for questions. Uh, so you uh, feel free to ask, uh, we will be happy to answer them. Okay, um, let's start with some uh, structure. Uh, today I'll keep it very simple. First, I'd like to give you a little bit of information. I'd like to explain you a little bit what this program is, what do we offer, uh, what kind of courses and curriculum we have. Then uh, next, we will have uh, some information on uh, admission requirements, how you can apply, uh, what are the conditions. Then my colleague Vivian uh, will help us. And then I'd like to say uh, some final words on studying uh, at UFA, of course, in Amsterdam, and then, of course, uh, in a broader sense, in the Netherlands, uh, for those who are not from this country, right? Um, first, what is business analytics? I think you all have, we all have some rough idea on this, uh, and you too, because you have uh, shown some interest to this program, and you are already interested in this topic, right? So, uh, of course, there may be many uh, definitions, different definitions, which could be all correct, but uh, let's put it this way. It's uh, about discovering hidden patterns in large amounts of uh, business data. Uh, while doing so, we use, of course, analytical uh, knowledge, analytics, uh, including mathematics, operations, research, statistics, probability theory. And we do, we apply this by using computer power, so programming and coding, and we apply this into business domain, which could be finance, marketing, HR, logistics uh, in different fields, okay? So the final goal here is to make, of course, better business decisions, data-driven uh, business decisions. And of course, uh, the better we excel the data, the, the better we master the data, the better, uh, more efficient decisions we can make. Of course, it's not always about finding hidden patterns. It's also about predicting uh, what is uh, likely to happen in the future. So uh, foreseeing the future a little bit, forecasting, but beyond that, uh, prescriptive analytics to control uh, as much as possible what we can do. So if things are going towards a certain direction, by using prescriptive analytics, we can understand which instruments, what uh, kind of management tools we can use uh, to manage all these uh, processes in the business field, yeah? But why uh, has this become so popular in the last years? Well, uh, well, first, let me, put, let me put it this way. It was already popular. So there is business analytics for a long time, but of course, in the last 10 to 20 years, things have changed drastically, okay? Uh, first, we have lots more data than uh, we had in the past. And uh, these data is coming from different sources like online platforms, websites, mobile apps on the one side, offline platforms like stores, uh, well, uh, offline facilities, or some other uh, platforms on the other side. And uh, of course, altogether, we uh, call this big data, which is a popular, uh, well, phrase nowadays. But of course, uh, big data being big data is not about the size of the data, how many people we have, but it's also about we collect this data dynamically from different resources. Of, of course, in this program, we also learn how to manage this, how to uh, handle this data, right? So this data can be structured in numbers or unstructured, like a photo, video, or text format. So, but uh, if we know how to handle this data, we can easily deal with this data and we can uh, obtain some nice, useful information from that data, which we can use in solving business problems. And uh, next, of course, we now have more clever and faster algorithms uh, to solve such pro pro uh, problems. It's, uh, of course, algorithms on the one side, uh, they're also linked with models. We build models. Let's say I try to predict my sales in the future or uh, the click-through rates on the internet in the future, what kind of model I should build. If I have enough uh, sufficient 
training and background in analytics, computer science and business, uh, of course, for me, for every, for every one of us, it's easier to build such models. Uh, then why the spatula? I think we have already, uh, we already have a part of the answer, no? Uh, as we see now, the data is playing a more crucial role. So uh, data-driven or data-based decisions are being more and more important because then apart from an intuitive uh, decisions or uh, just let's say non-numerical know-how, we also use data in concrete in a solid way uh, multi-source data to make these decisions as a decision uh, support tool. And by doing so, uh, we use new technologies and new business models are emerging. And you can easily imagine we have to learn this. We have to, we better have to have a training on this, a specialized expert, expert training, because we talk about new business models, we talk about new technologies, new algorithms, new models, and with, we talk about more data, large data sets, of course, altogether, uh, this is an enough solid ground to launch a new uh, independent, separate bachelor program uh, to train people, to train business analysts, data analysts, experts on this field. Okay, and of course, no need to say uh, since this area has become uh, quite popular, very popular for many reasons, there is now quite good job opportunities after you graduate. So companies, not only companies, uh, but nonprofit institutions, governments, academic institutions, they are looking for good data scientists, business analysts. So there are really good job opportunities. But what do we teach in this program? What do we offer? Uh, I'm gonna show you the curriculum in a short while, but first, of course, this is a broad domain. As I said in the beginning, we can use uh, these methods, these algorithms, models in different fields from human resources management to strategy, from finance to marketing. And of course, I can give many examples, but for the sake of time, I would like to show you a few specific examples. First is more close to my field. I'm in customer and marketing analytics. So it's about uh, building search and uh, targeting algorithms. Probably you are all familiar with online shopping, right? It's not only about shopping. You go to this website, then to this mobile app, you click, you make some decisions, you uh, enter some search queries. Of course, the better uh, recommendations or the better offers you get, more, re more relevant, more timely, uh, more likely that you can buy something or then more likely it is useful for you. So this program is also about building understanding and interpreting such algorithms and models, including some other uh, things which we also use in the field, uh, online bidding algorithms, dynamic pricing algorithms, uh, all the other algorithms and models that we use in digital advertising. I'd like to show you a little example here. As if websites were newspapers, you'd buy the top banner at a specific site for a month, hoping to catch the eye of your target audience, praying for a few clicks along the way. A lot's changed. Today, it's about real-time bidding, or RTB. Advertisers now pay only for the impressions they want at the price they choose. It's all done automatically, in real time, with multiple buyers bidding for each impression, around the clock, on millions of sites. Lots of technology moving at blazing speeds. TLV Media makes sense of it all by analyzing billions of ad impressions a day, figuring out who's clicking on what, where, and what they did next. Our RTB engine programmatically makes over 200,000 decisions per second, analyzing over 200 parameters per user at 10 milliseconds per decision. It's the art of showing the right ads to the right folks. Watching user reactions, our algorithms evaluate the strategy, tweak the plan, check results, and start again to make it even better. How much better? We measured up to 420% better. Okay, exactly. As it explains, uh you can easily realize how we use analytics combined with computer science and programming with some meaningful business and marketing related uh, knowledge here. Let's go to the next example. Well, uh, as I said in the beginning, the data could be structured and unstructured. When we talk about data, it's not only zeros and ones, it's not only like sales numbers or figures, it's also uh, textual data, it's also visual data. So the photos you see on Instagram, 
the videos uh, or stories you you may see on Instagram or uh, YouTube. This is also a large, very useful data source for us, right? So this we call unstructured uh, data analysis. We have many models and algorithms uh, dealing with this one. This is Kai Soferhor, is one of uh, our PhD students. Uh, of course, it's just an example. We have many research projects like this. So for example, in these kind of projects, we focus on how do we understand uh, by using photo and video data uh, from platforms such as Instagram, YouTube, Expedia, which kind of visuals, videos or photos people find more interesting, like them, what are the drivers? So you can build a model such as manipulating the colors, brightness, the contrast, all the other visual parameters, which objects are in or are not in the visual will create, will lead to better business outcomes. So this is very interesting, very uh, nice field. So this we call visual processing, visual data analytics, uh, and it could be really useful combined with textual uh, data analytics. Let me move, to, move on to next example. So it's not only about, um, well, marketing, finance, or accountancy. It could also be about ethics. So we use, uh, of course, uh, this artificial intelligence, machine learning based algorithms. Uh, we also have some courses, some training on uh, law and ethics in that manner. So how these analytical methods, models and algorithms help us in making critical decisions where, for example, human life is involved. This is a nice example uh, to show also this side of the field a little bit. Uh, let me click here. explained uh, quite well. I'm going to come later to that. Let me move on to my next uh, example. Uh, you may have heard of this uh, new technologies, new uh, visual technologies like we call deep fakes. So uh, the research here at UFA, at business school, which is linked to business analysis can be quite diverse. On the one side, we directly relate to these business uh, problems in the field of marketing, finance, logistics, or accountancy. Of course, there's an ethical uh, and more behavioral aspect, but there's also uh, some other dimensions like this, deep fakes. So uh, this kind of visual manipulation techniques, what are the main triggers, main components that mislead people? So this can also be used in an ethical manner. So how can we understand better this kind of new technologies like deep fakes and how it misleads, manipulates people so we can take measures accordingly, or as a business, uh, as professionals, we take uh, measures accordingly. We know how to deal with them. But just to give you one uh, little video again, uh, and then I'm, I'm gonna move on to the curriculum. Dear fellow scholars, this is Two Minute Papers with Dr. Karo Jona Ifair. It is important for you to know that everybody can make deepfakes now. You can turn your head around 
mouth movements are looking great and eye movements are also translated into the target footage. And of course, as we always say, two more papers down the line and it will be even better and cheaper than this. Yes, I think uh, that tells enough. And then, again, I want to repeat, these are few examples, right? Uh, so you, I just want to show you how our program, our curriculum, the training we offer can touch different uh, domains. On the one side, it could be pure business related. On the other side, it could be more uh, IT or uh, visual analytics related or ethics related. And uh, on the other side, they are interrelated. They are linked with each other. So I'd like to give you some details about the program. Uh, what do you learn? Well, uh, of course, we're not only learning, analyzing the data, right? It's not only about building a model uh, or building an algorithm or analyzing the data. No, uh, we offer a program which teaches you properly the whole process from asking the right questions from the very beginning. Because for a good business analyst, it starts with asking the right question. Okay, I have lots of data, but it's not for the sake of deep diving into the data. What do I want to learn? What do I want to know? How can I use this data in the best way to solve my business related problems? Okay, so it starts with asking the right questions. Then do we go to analysis right away? No. How can we compile, extract this data? How can we classify the data? How can we structure the data? So we also teach about data pre-processing, data preparation, data structuring. The other step which you need to do before the anal analysis and model building. Then of course, it comes uh, data management, uh, data analysis, model building. You take the data, you handle the data, you reshape the data, you analyze it and modeling it. And then in the end, it doesn't come to an end. And you learn about interpreting the results. Okay, in the end of our analysis, our model gives us some results, findings. But as a good business analyst, we, also, we should also be able to interpret the results in a good way, draw the right conclusions, and we, can, we should be able to produce the right managerial implications, which is also important. And last, but not the least, communicating these results, because Let's say we are graduates of this business analytics program. We know what these numbers or results mean to us, but another important aspect is to be able to communicate this with the general manager, with other business people who are less analytical, okay? So in this program, we offer a training which uh, trains you from very beginning, uh, so to say, from asking right questions to communicating uh, the results in the end. How do we do that? Um, as I said, this is a uh, business analytics program, bachelor specialized in this area. And business anal analytics are related to three main pillars. One is analytics, the other one is business, and the other one is computer science and programming. So this curriculum, we have designed, developed the program in such a way, we, uh, and we call it an integrative ABC curriculum. A represents analytics, B represents business component, and C represents programming and computer science component. The courses are also balanced accordingly in a nice way. So on the one side, you get the training on analytics related courses, such as mathematics, statistics, econometrics, operations research, which uh, is the main basis uh, to apply them in business and uh, before that programming field, then we have enough, uh, more than enough number of computer science and programming related courses. Okay, let's say you know the math, you know statistics, and you know uh, the econometrical models, but how can you put them into a script code so that uh, you can apply it to a business pro uh, problem? And of course, you will uh, get uh, quite a number of courses on business domain, like finance, HR, marketing, economics, strategy, and also ethics and law. And I don't mean to say each course is related to only one pillar. No, uh, we have many courses where more than one elements, ABC elements intersect, overlap, or given together, right? Uh, this we call ABC, AB, or AC courses. 
For example, we have an analytics for better world course, which is a very good ABC course. In this course, all these elements, computer science, programming, uh, business and analytics meet. Same for entrepreneurship and hackathon, machine learning. And some other courses where A and B elements meet. Well, like HR analytics, it's HR, but from a very analytical perspective, marketing analytics, marketing knowledge, but from a very, very analytical perspective and so forth. And of course, in your thesis work, all these pillars overlap, intersect and can be used again all together. Just a quick look at the curriculum from the very beginning, this is year one. Here you see um, we have more courses representing one pillar. These are fundamentals. This is to prepare you for more specialized courses in the second and third year of the curriculum. These will come later, but first we need a good basis. So we have courses like mathematics one and two, probability theory and statistics, and uh, introduction to programming, and on the business side, microeconomics and finance. But to give you a taste of the program, to show already in the beginning how it looks like, we also have an integrative course in the beginning, which is analytics for a better world. There you get some business knowledge and information. You will have the chance to combine it with programming and analytics right in the beginning. Year two, we again have some uh, one uh, pillar courses, but we have quite some number of uh, multi-pillar courses like Asia Analytics. It's a business and analytics course. And uh, sorry, it's algorithms and data structures. It's analytics and computer science, machine learning, analytics, computer science, and business all together. Operations research courses, which are a nice combination of business and analytics again. So you will have chance to combine the link there's different domains of information altogether in such courses. Uh, year three is an ICA. After you finish all these courses, the first semester of year three, you will have a nice chance to choose between different options, right? You can either go and do an international internship or international exchange elsewhere in one of our sister uh, schools around the world, or you can follow a minor you want to, in case you want to specialize in certain field, or you may uh, follow a nice choice of elective courses. So these are gonna be your options and you're free to choose uh, in this semester of the program, which, which is more modular. You can go this or that way. And then after you come back, then it comes to the last semester of the program. Again, we have, some specialized courses like text retrieval and mining, and then marketing analytics and computer and systems engineering. In the meanwhile, you'll be do doing your thesis and thesis seminar. As you see, uh, this is a three-year program, which is quite full in terms of uh, courses and different domains. Well, I like to say some few words on differences because I'm, Sure, I'm quite sure that uh, many of you have come to here today uh, to participate in this uh, meet and ask session. But probably for most of you, the main question is, okay, what is the difference? What is the difference of this program from other comparable programs? Of course, we are not saying it's in the sense that being better or worse, but we can just give, tell you about the differences, how different this one. So this can help you a little bit in deciding, right? And after these uh, slides, I'll give the word to uh, Vivian to talk to you a little bit about the admissions. So of course, the most common and uh, questions come about econometrics. What is our difference with econometrics or actual science programs? Well, I think the main difference is we are an integrative program. You are trained in econometrics, but the course are equally balanced between analytics, business domain, and computer science and programming. So to be more specific, in econometrics, there's not that much focus on computer science and programming. Here in business analytics, we have more focus on programming and computer science. And uh, another important difference in econometrics, the main focus is on economics mainly. So it's micro or microeconomics, but not so much on business related courses. 
but in this program, we have specialized courses on marketing analytics, customer analytics, HR analytics, entrepreneurship and hackathon, which you can also apply this analytical knowledge in certain business domain, right? And uh, one last, but not the least again, uh, in econometrics program, you focus more on traditional econometric methods like time series, uh, choice models, so different ways of regression, econometrics. We do that too, but we have more focus on AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning, so predictive methods. Um, another comparable program type is industrial engineering and combined with that, as they call it, Technische Bedreifskunde in the Netherlands, right? So what is our main difference with that one? If you are in a position to decide. Well, first of all, in industrial engineering, the main focus is mainly on supply chain and sometimes depending on the country operations research, not so much on the business domain, but as you see, one of our main pillars is business domain. So of course, we learn a little bit about supply chain, not a little bit, quite some about supply chain and logistics, especially in operations research uh, related courses, but uh, we have specialized course in business domain, like similarly uh, an econometrics program. Um, in industrial engineering and the Instabedreifskunde, the main focus is on industrial statistics and optimization. So not so much on artificial intelligence and machine learning. Here we have a different perspective. We have, uh, of course, probability theory and statistics, and we learn about statistical methods, but we put quite an emphasis on AI and ML based methods too. And uh, a last one after uh, industrial engineering, mostly there is a two year master program. In our case, uh, this is optional. Uh, there is a program in uh, Timbergen Institute Research Master. And also we have a, a master program coming up under accreditation process, uh, which is going to be one year. Two more programs. Well, this one is even with a similar name, Business Analytics at Freie Universiteit Amsterdam. What is our main difference with that program? I guess I may uh, get some questions on that. Well, first we have a very clear difference. Uh, the business analytics program in the Freie University Amsterdam, Freie University Amsterdam is given by mathematics department. It's a part of mathematics section, right? Uh, so this also reflects in program accordingly. Uh, on the contrary, we are a joint venture between faculty of economics and business and Amsterdam Business School. Uh, our mathematics and analytics related courses are offered by quantitative economics sec uh, section within faculty of economics and business. Uh, what does it mean in practice? Well, uh, in Free University, Free University Business Analytics, they have quite an emphasis on mathematics, less emphasis in business domain. We have quite some emphasis on mathematics, but not maybe not, not that much, but instead we balance it with some other domain specific knowledge on business side. Yeah, like HR marketing, entrepreneurship uh, and other business domain. And again, after FAU, our two years master, in our case, it's one year master, which is under accreditation now. Finally, uh, you might, some of you may have known there's an artificial intelligence AI program at FAU. Uh, what's the main difference between us and them? Well, uh, I think this time it's more clear. Uh, in FAU, uh, artificial intelligence program, there's not so much focus on econometrics and optimization. We do. We have uh, operations research courses, optimization related courses, and econometrics training. Uh, and again, we have more focus on AI-based techniques in the sense of computer and programming, which we apply them in business domain, like marketing, HR, finance. And the same difference with regard to master program. After AI program, there is a two-year master program. We have an upcoming, hopefully, 
master program under accreditation, which is planned to be one year. I think this gave you a good picture of the main differences. Of course, if there is anything uh, left, I will be happy to answer later on. Uh, sorry, I told you that I'm gonna give the word to Vivian, but first let me tell you a few words about career perspectives. Uh, I think you may have partly uh, taken this answer also in the beginning, while I was explaining you about the use and the importance of data and data-based, data-driven decision-making in business. So accordingly, uh, the career perspectives are uh, also reflecting that. Of course, there is quite an ample a wide range of career opportunities in business side, on the corporate side, in the sense that uh, banks, insurance companies, high tech companies, IT and telecom, fast moving consumer goods, quite many of these companies, they all use data intensively in consultancies, research agencies, advertising on the one side. On the other side, it could also be governmental institutions and nonprofit sector, there is always a chance that you can do your own uh, startup. Of course, it's more preferable maybe uh, after you get some experience, but it is always an option. And if you want, after the bachelor, you can also go further with uh, following a master program. So there are different options, but no matter what, uh, a huge percentage of uh, the graduates find uh, easily find a job right after the graduation. and. Uh, the average salaries that reflects more or less the salary levels of comparable programs, the numbers are quite satisfactory. So it shows that the business analysts, the, uh, the people who graduate from business analytics program start with satisfactory starting salaries and they uh, will increase uh, meaningfully in short time. Well, I said, this is a integrative program, business analytics and computer science. And of course we have many collaborators because we have an applied component uh, and it's not a purely theoretical program, right? We are, uh, it's about better decision-making in business problems. So we have lots of corporate collaborators. They help us in many ways, in guest lectures, uh, providing case studies, providing data assignments, providing vacancies for internships, and they also actively recruit from our programs. These are some of them, but I'm sure you may already know many of these companies. Now, I'd like to give a short break for myself, and I'd like to give the word to Vivian. She's gonna talk a little bit about the application and admissions. Hi, Vivian. Hi. And hi, everybody. I would like to talk about the admission application system. First of all, I would advise you to go to the um, website because there all the steps are explained how to apply for the business analytics program. What's really uh, important is to have a StudioLink account and an Embark account and also um, submit your application. Otherwise, we can't evaluate your um, application. <clears throat> After um, you submitted your application, uh, it will take four to six weeks for us to um, evaluate your application. Um, and after that, you will receive a decision. And um, uh, if you receive uh, a conditional uh, admissions, it's really important also to confirm your participation. That's a global actually step what uh, students need to do to get accepted into the program. Um, we do evaluate on three uh, aspects. One, your diploma. Uh, most diplomas uh, require mathematics. Your English uh, proficiency test. And some diplomas uh, need an extra mathematics proficiency uh, test that uh, can be taken from one of the um, uh, tests on the website or one of the tests we apply here at the university. Um, if you'd like to know the difference, if you need to take the one at university or the one was uh, added on the website, um, please apply uh, to our um, to this program, and you will uh, hear the decision from our site. Um, uh, Vivian, shall I go to the next slide? Or? Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. 
the application is open from one first of October, so you can apply whenever you like. One of the questions I, I did uh, see was uh, if students could apply with predicted grades, and the answer is yes, you can uh, apply with predicted grades. Um, well, here you, you see the uh, deadlines for all the um, students, um, the international students. Uh, for students with a non-EU degree, it's the 1st of May. Uh, sorry, the 1st of April. Students with an EU degree is the 1st of May. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea for UFA matching. I would just say go to the website and read the website as uh, fairly as possible because there all the information are stated. Um, and if you have any other question, you can still um, contact the admissions office. We will uh, add the link in the chat. Okay, Vivian, uh, thank you very much. Uh, maybe in the Q&A part, uh, there may be some more questions then uh, we can address them as much as possible. Uh, a few words on UFA matching. It's a matching module as we call it. Um, so it's like testing your level after the applications. Uh, so giving you some tests and asking some questions. So it's a modular uh, platform and uh, tries to guide you. It aims to guide you during your uh, application admission process uh, to give you a better idea about your level, uh, what kind of additional uh, knowledge or mathematics background you should have. So there's like a test, which is not a condition to be selected, of course not, right? But uh, which you can test your level and maybe uh, you can adjust yourself before you start the program. Um, a few words on studying in uh, UFA in Amsterdam and in the Netherlands. Uh, well, why to study uh, at UFA or particularly in Amsterdam? Well, uh, of course, there are many rankings, but uh, according to many of these rankings, we are ranked as number one university in the Netherlands. Uh, here are two examples from uh, QS World University Rankings and Times Higher Education Ranking, especially in this field. Uh, so we have quite good rankings, very good rankings also globally. You see it's uh, number 55 in the world and number 66 in the world according to two different rankings, being number one in the Netherlands. Um, Amsterdam is a nice to live. I live here a long time. Uh, it's a very international city. The quality of life is ranked very highly. Uh, so according to different rankings, it ranks between 10 to 15 uh, in life quality surveys. So it's really convenient, nice, uh, organized, settled city to live in. So um, all students, most students are very happy to live here. Likewise, the academics. It's a very multicultural city. Uh, so uh, it's, a uh, well, it's a mixture, uh, mingle point maybe. Uh, so there are people from all nationalities. This is also reflecting students. We have students from all parts of the world, not only from Europe, but from Asia, uh, from Latin America, America, Africa, from all countries, we have students and uh, also the people in Amsterdam. You will also see that. Uh, we have excellent student facilities. We have, uh, we have a nice library. We have uh, good uh, online and offline platforms where you can uh, continuously get information to be informed, to keep you updated uh, for self-development or different offices to find internships, helping in finding jobs for your personal development. Um, we have very good study advisors. Some of them are here today in this session. They guide you along your studies uh, for uh, when you have questions, when you have difficulties uh, related to your studies uh, or uh, your student life. So it's a continuous support. And of course, uh, you've also has nice social uh, facilities in terms of cafes, restaurants, and uh, other facilities like helping you in finding a uh, accommodation, all this kind of uh, different offices or initiatives and nice student clubs, which are organizing continuously different activities. Well, uh, I, I, I talked about internationalization. Look, this is what we have in the first year. Uh, so we, have, uh, we were accredited last year. So we got this year, uh, the first year students for the first time, so now uh, the first year one students are uh, have started their program. And look, it's also nicely balanced in the number of students. 
it's almost one third, one third, one third. Uh, one third of our students are now from the Netherlands. So they are Dutch students, uh, a little bit more than, of course, uh, one third. Uh, almost one third is European students outside of Netherlands. It's from everywhere, from Spain, Italy, Germany, Greece, all countries. And one third of our students are from non-EU region, including, well, Asia, as well as America, USA, Turkey, Russia, all these other countries. So you will really find a nice international student environment here. Well, uh, we have prepared, designed a nice program, a full program. Uh, it's challenging, but uh, it's quite ambitious. Uh, our curriculum is very strong. Uh, we worked long uh, to develop and design this program. So it's a, a result of a long years of work. Uh, we have a very nice third year where you have multiple options from going abroad to uh, follow a minor here. Uh, UFA, Amsterdam and Netherlands is good to uh, be, a nice place to be, to study, to, 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 to just live your student life. And afterwards we have, uh, we are also preparing nice master options for you. Uh, which is now under progress. So I personally, of course, uh, I would be very happy to see you as our students if you uh, decide to come to our program. But now, uh, since we have like 15 minutes left, let's continue with some questions. Yes, I had to turn on the camera again. Well, thank you, Umut, for... Uh your clear presentation. I think many questions are already answered within the presentation. Um, you told us a little bit about uh, what the program is about and the difference between econometrics and business analytics. Uh, there is also the question, what would you consider more difficult? Is there a difference in difficulty? Difficulty is a very subjective uh, concept. What is difficult? What is not difficult? If you're a better student, you may find a uh, better meaning in Dutch mathematics and quantitative uh, field, right? If you are from that field, maybe you find the other side more difficult. Uh, it might be vice versa. So it could be a very long answer, but I need to keep short. Well, uh, no, we don't, I don't think, I know both curriculums. We have no, dif uh, to me, if you ask me, we, have, we are not different in terms of difficulty with the econometrics program. We are just different from each other in some substantial ways. Like we have more focus on computer programming and uh, business domain. But we ask for the same math background in the admissions. So, yeah. Yeah, and then speaking of uh, admission, um, you've told us what the program looks like. There are a few students or a few uh, people uh, have questions about what basic knowledge do you need with regards to programming? Do you need to have some prior knowledge in programming no. to be able to do this no. program? No, very clear answer. No, you're not supposed to know. You're not expected to know how to program or programming before you start. This program is designed. This, is, this program is meant for that. We teach you that here our requirements are about mathematics, uh, that you uh, study in high school. So the quantitative skills and uh, language. Other than that, we don't ask for programming skills in advance, no. Yep, clear answer. Um, and there was a question, what is the difference between business analytics and business administration? Oh, that's a lot, that's a lot. We are, uh, look, uh, let me put it this way. Uh, Business administration is a, um, I think it's worldwide in all universities, there's a business administration program, which are, of course, their curriculums can be different, but it's not, uh, we, we have a very clear, very strong analytical focus, right? It is not, we are not a statistics program or econometrics program. Yes, we have a very strong, very meaningful business component but we teach all this business domain courses with an analytical perspective. Marketing, analytical perspective. HR, analytical perspective. Uh, in business administration, this is less, okay? It's more like 
uh, from a strategic or management perspective. I'm not saying we don't have that perspective, but we always uh, take analytics or uh, data-driven uh, manner. Yeah. Yeah, and there's also the question: Is this a new? Is this a new program? Can you tell something about that? This is a new program for us. Uh, of course, we had some specializations, specialized tracks in the past, which we built and run as a preparation to this program. We went under a long and uh, challenging accreditation process. Uh, so this is also accredited by uh, Dutch state. Uh, but now, yes, the program is new, but it's not starting this year. We already started last year. So uh, in the sense that it's gonna be, uh, if, you, if you come to this program, you're gonna be the second round students that start this program, yeah. And another question about differences between programs. Um, maybe it's possible to give an overview of what the differences are between the Bachelor Actuarial Science, Economics and Business Economics and Business Analytics. Well, I think that was covered in the slides on differences. But again, actuarial science program, it's very, com it's, it's very, it's very close to econometrics program, right? The main difference is uh, it is somewhat more focused on actuarial science, the insurance setting uh, than probability uh, and this kind of, but it, it's very close to econometrics. So the, the differences that I emphasized between us and econometrics program also applies to actuarial science. Business economics, well, it's economics, microeconomics, microeconomics, uh, quantitative economics. Well, we do have that to a certain level, but we have a business domain, marketing, finance, logistics, operations, research, entrepreneurship. So we are not an economic okay, economics, uh, we, we are not a program of economics. It's a business analytics program would also uh, give you some training on economics too, but from an analytical perspective. Thank you for, uh, for this answer. There was also the question, uh, how many students and PhD students are now currently in the, in the department? Can you say, tell Which us? department? Uh, for business analytics. So how many students are there? Are there PhD there students? There is no business analytics department in IFA, uh, neither in business school. This is a joint venture. So we, we have sections, departments like quantitative economics, operations research, marketing, finance, accounting and control. Um, business analytics program is a combined joint venture of all these different sections and departments, okay? We, have, we don't have a separate department named business analytics. So this is a kind of cooperation. Uh, so combining powers with all these programs. How many PhD? I don't know. Uh, each sections have their own PhD students, their own faculty, depends. We have, uh, departments with 25 uh, professors and employees. There are some others with 30, some others with 35. Yeah, it's quite so many people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm curious, uh, Viviane Merel, do you have some questions that you feel like are important to uh, answer for the, for the whole group that are relevant for everyone that you still see in the chat or, or that you picked up? Uh, yeah, there's a question. Uh, if you have completed the business analytics bachelor, is it possible to find a job outside of the Netherlands? Of course, yes. The answer is a clear yes on my side. Many, many, many of our graduates uh, in comparable programs, they most of them, well, if you look at the numbers, maybe majority uh, choose to stay here and find a job here. But I know many, many, many students go and find job elsewhere. Yeah. 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 And the questions about jobs uh, keep coming. Um, there's here a question from Gia. Is it true that actuarial science and uh, actu uh, students that did econometrics are in higher demand than business analytics? No, we can't say that. What is the source of that information? No, it's a question. Is that true? Uh, no, uh, because if, if she's saying, is it true? Then I ask, what is the source of that information? No, there's, okay. I, I, I've never heard of such thing. No, yeah. there, I, I think it's, uh, they're close. Uh, business analytics students have slightly higher chance to find job in certain settings. Econometrics, 
maybe have slightly higher chance in some other settings, but uh, both, uh, I think overall the chances are quite equal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we see that as well as study advisors when students come into our office, there are also students that during their studies are already offered jobs and uh, uh, work as a work student for certain companies. So uh, uh, yeah, I can uh, confirm this. Um, I think that we've answered a lot of questions. Uh, Mero, Vivienne, do you feel like there are some questions unanswered? I think I yeah, Neil's coming. Uh, no, well, there are a lot of admissions questions I see, uh, but um, yeah, as Vivian already said, just check the website for all the information on how to uh, how to apply and what the entry requirements are, and we will also uh, stay here in the we will stay here in the chat. But maybe Vivian, you have something to to add about the admission questions. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add that we have um, a diploma calculator. I will add that also in the uh, chat because it's a really handy tool to check if you meet the mathematics requirements. Um, again, if you do not meet the mathematics requirements, there is always a test you can take. Um, uh, so, so you do have to write uh, a mathematics. If you have to do an extra test, that will all be stated on the, um, the diploma calculator. But I will add that in the chat. Yes. Okay. Well, I think that we um, came to the end of this session. Uh, I want to uh, give a big shout out to the whole panel for uh, answering the questions. And Umut, of course, for the very clear explanation of what the program uh, is and uh, yeah, giving us an insight on what to expect here at the UVA. For all of you, thank you so much for attending. Hopefully all your questions have been answered and you got excited about the program. Make sure to uh, inform yourself, go also to other open days, to other open sessions to make, to make a decision. Um, so uh, thank you very much, everyone. Umu, do you have some last words for Everyone. Yes, I'd like to thank you all again uh, for showing uh, interest to our program, uh, being here together with us. Uh, feel free to be in touch if you have further questions. Please go and check your website. It's often being updated, uh, so you can stay tuned. I'd like to also thank you guys, uh, my colleagues, uh, for making this session possible. Uh, yeah, it was very nice being you uh, together with you today. Thanks. Yes, thank you so much. And maybe see you all next year in Amsterdam. <laughs>